Over the years, I've been called many things, some of them not complimentary, others sometimes are. But one thing that has always stuck is that I am, for my sins, a hawker typhoon obsessive. And while I'm no Chris Thomas, I am on social media, which means I often get asked typhoon questions, especially on Twitter. One of them is for the date of a photo of a typhoon. And this can be tricky, as for most of the aircraft's operational life, she wore black and white stripes of one type or another. While most believe that the stripes worn by typhoons are the so-called D-Day stripes, today we're going to ask when D-Day stripes are not D-Day stripes. And the short answer to that is when they're ID stripes. Confused? Well, you're not alone on that. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the Hawker Typhoon's troubled relationship with black, white, and even sometimes yellow paint. So our story begins in 1942. The Typhoon was in the midst of a troubled entry into frontline service. Its development would stop, start, and then finally rush through to meet the needs of the RAF. Engine and structural issues were still very present. And there was the added fear of the Luftwaffe's new fighter, the Fokker Wolf 190, which the Typhoon kind of resembled when amped up on adrenaline. The Typhoon was entering service with three squadrons, 56, 266 and 609, all based at Duxford as part of the Duxford Wing. By Operation Jubilee in August of 1942, 356 Squadron aircraft had already been shot down by Spitfires and friendly fire incidents. So, step one in the aid memoir for other Allied pilots spotting the Tiffy as a new friendly friend was in September 1942 when a foot-wide yellow band was painted around the wing in line with the inboard cannon of the now standard Mark 1B. This didn't help. As the Typhoons were now down south to counter the tip-and-run raids by the Luftwaffe, the not-so-friendly Akak boys were shooting at everything they could see. So, in the RAF's benevolent wisdom, in November of 42, they ordered the entire nose of the aircraft painted white. Pilots hated this, and these noses didn't last long. So the order was rescinded a month later. So the RAF tried again. This time they decided to add a bit of black to the white and the black and white go faster stripes were added to the underside of the Typhoon's wings. These stripes started at the wing root and extended out about 10 feet along the underside of the wing. The white stripes were twice the width of the black ones and would feature on all the Typhoons from November 1942 all the way to February 1944. Now, it is debatable whether this stopped the old Akaf boy shooting at them, but as a rule of thumb, if your Typhoon has a car door and stripes start and end in black and the white ones are bigger, it's an ID stripe, December 1942 through February 1944. Unless, of course, it's a Tempest Mark V, just to confuse things, because they put stripes on those when they came in in 1944. So, did the stripes stop friendly fire? Well, as we said, not really. Six typhoons would be lost in 1942 and 43, including 609 Squadron's commanding officer, Pat Thornton Brown, who was shot down with his wingman by newly arrived US Army Air Force P-47s. Even when the stripes were gone, six more would be shot down, all to US Army Air Force aircraft, with five more pilots killed. As another aside, you may see a few pictures of Typhoon with a big white stripe running from the nose down the fuselage and a black port wing. These are the lesser spotted Eastland Typhoons from Exercise Spartan in 1943, which is a whole other tale which we don't have time to get into here. Also, you know, if you're B. Beaumont, your Typhoon would have yellow cannons because, yeah, it's B. And so to 1944. One of the Typhoon's great assets is what today we would call a semi-modular design. This meant that the aircraft could be updated regularly without major changes to its structure. And the most noticeable part of this is the first major use of a teardrop canopy on an Allied fighter. This modification could be done at a maintenance unit and could be done really rather quickly. This is also why, unlike the Spitfire, which got a new mark number every time it got a new coat of paint, the baseline Typhoon remained the same, so regardless of changes to the canopy, the tail, the rear fuselage, 
balancing. She was the good old Mark 1B all the way through. Hawkers were like that. And lo, the 4th of June, 1944 arrives and the stripes return. The order came with 24 hours notice to the original date for D-Day. All Allied Expeditionary Force aircraft were to be painted with uniform black and white stripes around the wings and the fuselage. This was done on the night with rather more haste than skill. Brooms and even pilots were put to use to paint all the aircraft. So D-Day stripes are each 18 inches wide and there are three whites to two blacks. So if the stripes are the same width and only have two black stripes, they are invasion stripes. And they appear on aircraft from the 4th and 5th of June 1944 through to round about September, by which time most of them had been rubbed off or they weren't being applied anymore. So another rule of Tiffy Thumb for you is this. If it's got a bubble canopy and it's got stripes, it's summer 1944. Yes, there were a handful of Cardor Typhoons still in service, but check the stripes. If they're all the same size, it's likely D-Day and beyond. The stripes would be tidied up over the coming weeks of the campaign, with the stripes being removed from the upper wing surfaces from July and they were all gone by September. Operating from forward advanced landing grounds, being shelled and bombed at night, the typhoon wings would be nearly bled white between D-Day and the end of August. 271 aircraft were lost, with 153 pilots. Some squadrons would face a 100% aircraft attrition rate. The losses would remain colossal as flak intensified and the right shrunk back. People joke about the Typhoon a lot, the engine, the carbon monoxide problems, the tails falling off, but for a small force of aircraft, of which only 3,317 were ever built, they did pretty damn well, even with the extra black and white paint. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. We have the full Damcasters podcast as well, which covers all of aviation history, not just Second World War, but the typhoon does come. I've been Matt Bone. Thanks for listening. And please do take care of yourselves.